Hello everyone, I'm Gary Martin, one of the PGA pros from Huddersfield Golf Club. And today we're joined again by PGA professional coach Scott McGovern. How are you? Good, thank you. A bit cold. <laughs> so we've come to do a little bit of a course walk today and Scott's going to, um, you know, give us some great tips on course management. He's got three absolute perlers, um, you know, and I think, you know, whether you've been playing golf, you know, you're a new golfer, or you've been playing 20 years, I think there's something you might learn today. There's loads of golf management tips out there. There's lots of information you can do or you can implement into your game to help them make you play better golf. I'm going to just list my three favourite ones. The first one is using the tee box to your advantage. Most golfers do have a predominant shot shape to hit. For me, I hit a fade. So I'm going to talk you through how I would tee the ball up on this teeing area to, uh, to hopefully make it a little bit easier for me to hit this green. We have quite wide, wide tee boxes in one field goal. So me hitting a fade, I would make sure that I see the golf ball far right as I possibly could. Which for me, that opens up the left hand side of the golf course. So I'm able to set the ball off down the left hand side. And if I hit my normal shot, which is a fade, it's going to fade back and hopefully go onto the green. I think a big one in terms of, in terms of talking about teeing the ball up is too many people aim at the flag. You're trying to pick, or you're trying to pick out your starting line. Nobody hits a dead straight golf shot. So for me, I'm aiming always the left hand side of the green and then allowing the ball to fade back. So if I tee the ball up again to the right, it allows me more space to pick that starting line and send that golf ball out to the left. I think that's, that's an absolutely fantastic point, that Scott. And it's one you know, even I'd not considered, you know, after all these years of playing golf. So yeah, yeah good one. And vice versa, if you hit a draw, if you want to hit a draw, tee it up to the left hand side of the tee box. Because again, it, it, it takes away the trouble. If I'm teed up at the right left hand side of the tee box and I'm wanting to hit a fade, so if we can hopefully get a down the line view yeah, here, let's, let's say we use an extreme example. If I tee the ball up here trying to get to that green and I'm wanting to hit this fade, I would have to be aiming somewhere miles over there. But if I was here and I'm wanting to hit a draw, it opens up all that space down there for me to hit out that way and hopefully draw the ball back. So picking the side of the tee box which suits your shot shape is definitely a really I good think another use. little point as well, and I've only just noticed this because we're actually stood down the line here, but if you were to come and tee up at this side of the box, there's, a, there's more chance you're going to hit this immediate trouble on the left, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, it takes the trouble out of play. I mean, for, if I'm hitting a fade from here, all that I can see is the right hand side of the golf course yeah me hitting a fade i want to be able to hit the golf ball down the left hand side of the golf course so teeing up at the right and opening up that left hand side is what i need to do and we do this with irons and drivers fantastic point now this next course management tip is a little bit of a tip on how to approach a goal shot i do this with a lot of my golfers when we do short game it's more towards sort of how you process a shot and how you want to plan and execute a shot the amount of golfers, let's use this as an example, that are just off the side of the green and they gravitate to the same golf club, whether that be a sand wedge or a lob wedge, and have very little thought about what's going to happen after they actually hit the shot in terms of where it's going to land and what's it going to do when it hits the green. So for me, I always say, give them a golf ball in the hand and give them that shot over there and say, okay, it's a cash prize if you can get the ball in the hole. Every single golfer, will do this. Oh, please go in. Please go in. <laughs> That'd have been great for the video. But every golfer does that. They'll roll it. They'll land the ball five or ten foot in front of them because it's the easiest way to get to the hole. But when we, when I say to golfers, why don't you do that with your golf club? It's sort of like a eureka moment because most golfers, again, pull out the sandwich and try and land it 30 feet away from where they stood which if we had a bucket that was five foot in front of us and a bucket 30 feet away from us, which one's easier to land it in? It's that one. But as golfers, why do we always choose the one that's more difficult? So being able to select a club where you are going to get a lot of roll when the shot needs it, think about how you would throw the ball to the hole, or how you would roll the ball to the hole, and then try and recreate that with a golf club. So I think Scott's just made an absolutely fantastic point there and it comes down to sort of, you know, trying to play the sort of higher percentage shots, the ones that are easier to execute. But I would actually say one thing, and you might relate to this if you're a, a newer golfer or a higher handicapper, 
And, um, you know, I'll just give you an example. When I were a junior golfer, my dad would always say, you know, get your pitch edge out, get your 9 9 out and play that chip and run shot. But it was one that I'd never practiced on a driving range or I'd never been coached. So I never used to execute it that well. And I think that sort of put me off the technique. So I persisted with a, a sand wedge and a, and a lob wedge because that was one that I enjoyed practicing. So I were a little bit better with. But actually, you know, believe me, if you are a mid to handicap golfer, uh, it, is a, it is a shot that you need to be taught or you need to, and you need to practice um, because it is a lot easier to execute. But you, you might just need a little bit of tuition on that one um, before you know you, you're fully confident to put that in your game. But from a from a percentage point of view, is exactly right, and uh, it's definitely a shot when there's no trouble between you and the flag, and you've not got to sort of go any you know over any uncertain ground. Then it, it's one that you need to be start to play, guys. Definitely. So just coming to our sort of last course management tip of the day. Yeah, the last one for me is the most important one. It's, uh, again, this has been mentioned a million times in YouTube videos before, but finding how, out how far you hit your golf clubs. I think too many golfers tend to take their best shot that they hit with a seven iron, and let's say that goes 160, and in their head, they hit their seven iron 160. But in reality, if you were to give that same golfer 100 seven irons to hit in a row, their average might be 145. A lot of golfers do tend to miss short they do tend to underclub quite a lot. So finding out how far you hit your golf clubs is imperative for plotting your way around a golf course. If you know a bunker is 150 yards away, you need to know what club you need to hit to either get over that bunker or to stay short of that bunker. Yeah, with certainty, you know. With certainty, yeah. And you can play to your sort of limits. If you, an example, let's say there's a bunker at 200 yards for me and I wanted to lay up to that bunker, I know that I can hit a six iron as hard as I want. There's no possible way I'm going to get that six iron to that bunker. So being able to figure out how far you hit your clubs on average, and then you can factor in after that. So okay, I hit my, let's say your seven iron on average goes 145, but I know that maybe every now and again if I hit a really good one, it might go 155. Yeah. So you can factor those into when you're playing well, like if a really nice lie, maybe, maybe I can get a seven iron there, but finding out an average, not just the best shot you hit. So I think that's an absolutely great point from Scott and one, you know, especially geared towards the higher end decapers who might have a, a bigger dispersion on distance, you know, between like a good strike and a bad strike. And, you know, most golf clubs these days tend to have, you know, your golf pros tend to have a, a launch monitor, um, you know, and a, gap, a gapping session cost-wise. I mean, I think I, £35 I charge for a gapping session. And if anything, I think it can, that £35 that people spend, it can end up saving them money because the amount of times that people come for these gapping sessions then realise that they hit the free wood exactly the same distance as the five wood yeah. or they hit the five wood further than the free wood or they hit their five iron the same distance as they hit the four iron so all of a sudden the slots in their bag decrease just because there's 14 clubs available doesn't mean you have to put 14 clubs in your bag most people do have golf clubs in their bag that are duplicated that yeah the same distance so i think when we come to when we're talking about course management you know distance control is a massive part of that you know for hitting windows whether it's depth for green or whether it's landing areas on a golf course so you know if that's something you're not confident about definitely you know search your pro we're not actually here to plug ourselves guys but i will put our details in the description if you're in the leeds area and or just feel there. We well, I've opened my diary. Have you opened yours? Yeah, mine's available on my website. Everyone can see what uh, I think it's up to two months in advance. You can yeah. see what's available. Send me them details. There. I'll stick them in description, guys. If you're around, and uh, yeah, well, uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. And you know, get in comments if there's any other parts of sort of golf ma golf course management or you know topics regarding course man management you'd like us to discuss. We should do this again, shouldn't we? Yeah, it'll be good when we can actually hit some shots on the golf course, make it a little bit more interactive, get Definitely. some scenarios in place. I, I think, think today's been quite general. Yeah, and I think we've only just touched the surface with that one, and there's plenty more that we can sort of discuss on that. But we want to try and keep these videos, you know, quite short and, and concise. So, point. yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that, guys, and uh, I'll see you in a couple of days. Bye. Bye.